New regulations detailed today will effectively end sales of new passenger vehicles powered only by gasoline or diesel in this country by 2035. So how will this transition take effect? Well, let's bring in Stephen Gibo, Canada's Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Minister, thanks so much for making time for us today. My pleasure, Jacqueline. We were just speaking with an analyst about the EV industry and the expectations uh, in the year ahead. I know you're thinking uh, 12 or 13 years ahead, but mm -hmm. what one year at a time here. Um, in, in terms of sales at this point, things have been uh, relatively disappointing. There's new models coming to market, but uh, this, on the sales side of things, it, it, it has been weak. And we even heard from Ford cutting production on its F-150 Lightning, the electric version of its uh, Ford F-150, that popular vehicle yeah. in this country. Uh, Minister, what, what do you think is going to change for consumers to make them more likely to want to buy an EV over the next few years? Well, I don't know about the Ford uh, 150 uh, electric, but what I can see by looking at the data in Canada is that uh, in the last three years, sales of electric vehicles have tripled. We went from about 4% of new sales in at the end of 2020 to more than 13% at the beginning of 2023. And we're not, we don't have the numbers yet for, for, for the end of the year. Uh, we're seeing in Quebec, uh, one out of five uh, vehicles sold is, uh, more than one in five vehicles sold is, is, is electric. Uh, and, and it's more than one in four in, in, in British Columbia. So clearly there, there is a demand. I think what is unfortunately discouraging some, some customers is the, is the wait time, uh, six months uh, to, to two years in, in some instances. So people will, will go to, to, to conventional internal combustion engine. I think the purpose of the availability standard that we're announcing today is to make those electric vehicles more available, uh, to have more models available uh, across the country so that Canadians can, can, can buy them because clearly there is a demand. When uh, when you're talking about being able to buy them, I mean, it's not just about being able to find one in stock. It's also affordability, too. When you're looking at some of these electric vehicles, you're you're looking at the $70,000 range. Um, a, a recent report by Scotia Economics was looking at how much prices would have to come down in order for Canadians to uh, be able to uh, afford them for this, you know, 2035 timeline. And for the middle income bracket, they suggest that prices would have to come down by a third. Um, if you're you know, making less than that middle income bracket, then prices would have to be halved. Um, you know, is it realistic to think that Canadians are going to be able to afford an electric vehicle on, on this timeline? And especially with you know, the challenges on the automaker side of things to be able to make them in a, in a profitable manner? The average uh, sale, the average cost of a, a of a vehicle right now in Canada is around sixty five, sixty seven thousand dollars, and and the price difference between an electric vehicle and an internal combustion engine uh, for for equivalent model on average uh, is between three and seven thousand dollars, which is why the federal government is providing a five thousand dollar incentive, on top of which many provinces in, in in Canada, whether it's British Columbia, Quebec, Nova Scotia, uh, Prince Edward Island, are providing provincial in, in incentive to make it easier but it's not uh, when when looking at this and you would appreciate this more than other being at Bloomberg perhaps but it's the cost of operating a vehicle it's not just a cost of purchasing it and there's an independent study by clean energy Canada that shows that over a 10-year span uh, for a equivalent sedan electric versus gas gas powered uh, the, the 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 sale the you will save uh, $3,000 on average per year. So the savings are about 30,000 years for, for an average vehicle in, for a Canadian family uh, in, in, in Canada over a 10 year period. That's, that's major savings for, for, for Canadians. I wonder what that takes into consideration in terms of uh, the electrical costs, because if you're um, perhaps somebody who could put a, a charger in their home, you might be able to get maybe a lower rate for the electricity that you're uh, using for your vehicle versus somebody needing to go to a charging station I mean, we don't really know how those things might play out, especially if there is increased demand. If there's more demand, then maybe prices go up for some of these things. How do you take all of that into account? So on average, um, the cost of operating uh, or charging an electric vehicle versus putting gasoline is, is one-fifth. 
and that's a Canadian average. So I, I'll recognize that there are regional or provincial differences, but but the average is one to five. Number one, number two, eighty percent of electric vehicle users will charge at home. Uh, there is another twenty percent, um, mainly in, in in downtown core, where they they don't have access to, to home charging stations. So there we are talking about public charging stations. And, and, and you should remember that um, electricity, as opposed to gasoline, is a, re a regulated commodity, with the exception of Alberta, where, where the market is deregulated. But, um, but in, in, all, in all other provinces, electricity, the prices of electricity is, is regulated. So for, for price to go up, there, there is a process where uh, utilities have to go through their energy boards to, to, to propose price increase. They, has to, they have to defend it. I, I know I participated in many of, the, of those hearings in, in a previous life. So they can't can't simply jack up price like we're seeing all the time with gasoline. That's not the case with with, with electricity. So that's why we're, we're pretty confident that those savings will be there for for Canadians for for all of the for for all of those reasons. Minister, when it comes to these targets, um, the the ramping up of these targets, twenty percent first, and then all the way to one hundred percent by uh, twenty thirty five. Um, how will they be enforced? Are, are there going to be penalties to the automakers if they uh, don't meet those targets? First thing I should say is that we've developed that that regulation uh, in close contact with our colleagues in in the United States. In fact, I was uh, recently sitting down with the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Regan uh, at COP28 to talk about how we're moving pretty much in sync on that. Uh, there, they also have draft regulations that uh, that will end up doing very similarly what we're doing here in in Canada. And in terms of compliance, it's like any other compliance to to Canadian environmental laws and, and, and regulations. We're using the same regime as we've been using with car manufacturers for over a decade uh, when it comes to complying with, uh, with vehicle emission standards.